Okay, hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another review. And I'm sorry, I'm sorry this one's going to part people with their money. Uh, as those that watch the channel on a regular basis know that I have been getting pessimistic as shit recently. Uh, I have been overwhelmed. I've been uh, disappointed by so many crap releases from so many manufacturers. Just trying to make the money grab with the the two version, the three version, the the modified version, the pro, the plus, etc., etc. It's doing my head in at this point. You can probably see that reflected in the fact that I'm just not reviewing a lot of stuff because I've taken the policy of. If I don't like it, I'm not going to waste time listening to it. And if there's already stuff that I reviewed that I think is better, I'll just leave those reviews up and you can choose from that. So I'm not the most active reviewer, but I am actively listening. I still get everything that comes in, but I'm now only going to do stuff uh, and do videos of stuff that I actually think adds value to the community because we've got to the point where we're just so extended into this. these companies trying to grab you money with collaborations, with uh, uh, follow-ups to previously brilliant products or products that are recognized and then releasing another because maybe their sales have slowed down. This one is different though. This is the Timeless 2 and I went into this so pessimistic and in fact the first 30 minutes of the listening I was ready to bin these. They were interesting sounding uh, on that first listen and they're a very interesting earphone in terms of the design and concept. If I'm not too lazy right now I'll, I'll roll some b-roll footage of the uh, unboxing experience. It's pretty standard fare and I wasn't, you know, the first thing that annoyed me was that they continued this stupid round disc design. I don't think anybody thought the original round disc design on the Timeless 7 Hertz uh, was in any ways a good idea and it's, it's redundant because the, if you see this part of the disc here, you can chop that off. This this piece is just excess material and it would sit a lot better in against the Tragus and anti-Tragus. But I think that they think that this is some sort of design cue that people are, think it's instantly recognizable like a set of earbuds or something. I also think having a circle in your ear looks stupid. Um, but you couldn't deny the original uh, 7 Hertz Timeless and what they brought to the game in terms of a competitor for the original 10 Hi5 P1. This one, as I say, is more of the same on the design. I think this faceplate that they've stuck in is almost like a sticker because you can see the raised edges on it. It looks a little bit cheap. And at first I thought it was like a little plastic cover that I was going to peel off. Um, but no, it is actually built into the design. The design is virtually identical. It comes with these tips. Who knows what these tips are? They feel very similar to the Asla Zenderfit tips, but I'm sure they're maybe from another manufacturer. Uh, I recommend the Asla Zenderfit tips, but I'll also recommend these if uh, I get a, a confirmation of what these tips actually are. Uh, so please leave your comments down below and I'll leave the links in the description to the ear tips as well as my recommended ear tips and my other recommended products as well as the links to the actual pricing of this because this is probably going to drop on Prime Day. Um, the big thing about this, let's, let's talk about the cable first. The cable is weird again. Uh, this this headphone is a... An, a whole bunch of anomalies and a whole bunch of weird and I really like this design it's the 3.5 millimeter jack I wish they included some sort of balanced uh, cables in it but I don't think you need it driving this out the iFi Go Blue or the Dothonry uh, Honey H1 uh, is obviously a powerful source but I listen to this straight out the phone and it sounds uh, fine yes out the phone Sony Xperia with a headphone jack uh, you have this little transparent uh, design which I think is very very cool and you also have this computer ribbon style for uh, strands just in a straight line and computer ribbon style and it splits into uh, two lines of two after the splitter you've got a little cable cinch in there you got a little seven hertz um, reflective uh, splitter at this point here Overall, I think it's a really nice cable. It actually works really, really well. The design sits at a shallow uh, depth insertion, medium to shallow. I eventually got a good seal when I played about with the tips. Um, the, the big thing that I didn't know that I was getting in this earphone, and it made the world of difference in terms of sound performance and why this is such a bloody amazing sounding headphone. This, this sounds amazing, guys. Like, I, I was blown away, especially considering my first impressions. The first impressions came from this. These little nipples, I've never seen this sort of design. I'm going to call them nipples or arrowheads or something. Um, it came with this one installed, uh, the gold colored one. 
And I don't know if it's a difference in materials or whatever that's making the, the sonic changes as well. It came with this one installed first and I listened to it and I was like, damn, I was like, it sounds, the bass was a little bit more muted, not like low bass, but uh, in terms of, I've already got something that does that in the P1. The, the treble though sounded a little bit aggressive, not a little bit aggressive, it sounded weird. It sounded almost like a metallic sheen to the overall sound, but the upper mid bass, uh, the upper mids sounded quite aggressive, especially listening to the two test tracks. I, when I have earphones like this, I just listen to a few different test tracks because otherwise it takes such a long time modifying these uh, filters and stuff and then testing them against each other. And usually I just test with the stock filters the company gives you on it and I was ready to dismiss these earphones. 100% I did not like them. Uh, I thought they sounded interesting in a weird sort of way because I was like, wow, the detail is really, really good here. But I was like, this metallic sheen and this, this treble area and stuff like that. So then thinking about the original design of the original uh, 7 Hertz Timeless, I remember seeing this sort of little driver configuration of the filter configuration. And I went ahead and I put that on and instant transformation of the sound. The filters, most of the time, do not make much of a difference. They are quite disappointing to listen to. Uh, you feel maybe like slight modifications, and you're like, just create a good earphone, just stop wasting my time because I'm going to put that filter on one time and I'm never going to change it again. So I, I, I spent some time listening with the what I will call the original filters, uh, and I was like, oh, damn, this sounds really, really good. Like, it was like a 7 hertz timeless, but with better bass performance. Still lots of clarity, lots of detail, um, and not an out-the-head experience or by any means or anything like that, but increased the sound stage over the original tips that I tried on it. So I was coming away impressed, and I was like, okay, so this is the, the one that I'll probably settle on. I'll have to do a comparison to the original 7 hertz because it's got the same sort of filter tips. The... I went back to like take a break, came back, listened to them a little bit more, and I was like, oh, before I do it, I'll, I'll throw in the last set of filter tips, uh, which was the ones that are currently on it just now. The silver tips with a tiny, tiny little port at the end there, but like the little vents at the side, really, really unusual design. And honestly, I thought that it looked so similar uh, to the gold ones, but the gold ones have a smaller, if you can see here, uh, I can bring it up. I don't know if you can see there, but the, the gold tips have a smaller side opening uh, and a slightly, I would say, bigger opening on the tip of the nozzle. And I just thought it's going to be more of the same of what I had with the gold tips, uh, but let's try it. And I put it on and oh my God, oh my God. Uh, I have no idea how much these sound, but if these are under three, four hundred dollars, these are incredible, incredible sounding. Uh, I, I use the, the Tin Hi Fi P1 as my sort of barometer for planar magnetic headphones. And I think I have, still have the P1s hidden in here somewhere. Um, they, th these are the best sounding planars that I've heard to date uh, in terms of that sort of under $500 planar technology headphones. These blew my mind in, in the sound. I was listening, it's extremely detailed, extremely refined, but the bass is punchy and, and, and impactful. As I say, going back to uh, quick musical doodles, uh, it's a really good song to evaluate for bass and treble at the same time because you get the splashing of the hi-hats, you get the riff of the guitar coming in, but then you also get the, the a really, really strong and prominent bass line. Uh, and at the in the first sort of 30 seconds there's a, an area of that track with extended decay on it so you can watch how the decay and I think that's a very important area to listen to when you're you're evaluating a planar headphone because the, the decay in the timber is one of the strong points of that technology the way that the notes seem to float and dissipate into the background with this it was absolutely wonderful but then the vocals were like up front um, extremely musical extremely um, vibrant sounding vocals. The guy's voice just sounded absolutely wonderful. Then I switched over into a jazz recording. I listened to Diana Crowell, Autumn in New York. Her voice extends beautiful and dissipates and floats off into the distance. The, the piano keys tingle. Um, it sounds a really intimate performance, really stunning, stunning, stunning performance. Then you get into things like guitars. For example, I was listening to Sungo Jung uh, listening to Rodrigo Gabri Gabriela uh, Tamakun, 
um, and even if you're going to talk about guitars, um, infected mushroom um, uh, artillery, for example, when it goes into the guitar solo, just wonderful resonance on the strings, uh, on the stringed instruments. Uh, whether you're listening to electrical or uh, neutral, I was listening to Polyphia, uh, Polyphia uh, playing God. It's a very, very complicated track. Uh, any Polyphia, uh, Polyphia song uh, is going to sound mind blowing if you don't know that band. They're the they're the absolute premier guitarists right now at this point. Uh, Tim Henson, uh, Scotty Page. Uh, they, they produce extremely complicated guitar music with lots of fretwork, lots of finger work, uh, different kinds of bend techniques and stuff like that. And it, it really comes alive and you can really immerse yourself and isolate the individual parts because there's so much detail refined through this earphone. Uh, is it perfect? It's absolutely not perfect. And the, the, the thing that throws it back is that stupid design. I just don't like it. it does, it's not overly intrusive, but it could be more comfortable. Uh, if it was not with this stupid uh, faceplate, I also think that, and I don't think it's going to show up on camera there, but the see the sort of ridge that you can see on the inside? It sort of makes it look like a sticker on the end of it, and I think it just cheapens it a little bit. They are very lightweight, which is something that I do like, and once they're in place that with this cable, the cable I've grown to love over my listening sessions, really, really enjoyed it, and it comes with fantastic ear tips. Like, these ear tips are incredible, so please leave a comment and let me know about those in the bottom. And as I say, I'll leave a link to all my kit, all my uh, ear tips, cable recommendations and stuff in the description below but uh, yeah this one is a hype review and I've not done a hype review in a long long time because nothing I have sat down and listened to has blown me away in fact the other video that I just recorded on this channel is of my customized cost porta pros because I just wanted to talk about how stuff that was previously released is already good and the, the new releases are not really doing anything for the community despite people wanting to talk about these differences here there meh 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 um, this is something special. This is something to look out for. This is something that, my God, it sounds really, really good. Um, now, I, I want to caveat, I've not heard the IE version, the AE version. I think there's another one, the 7 Hz Timeless, and then there's another limited edition version or something. I haven't heard that, so maybe it's similar to that. But in terms of just sitting down and listening to this, listening to this versus the original, listening to this next to the Tin Hi Fi P1, which I consider my gold standard for planars, that's replaced. This is now the gold standard. It is unbelievably detailed, but with that bass and the more prominent bass line on it, it's so much more musical. It's got like a slight hint of warmth, but just overall clarity, perception, beautiful, beautiful earphone. Um, yeah, I cannot recommend this enough. So I, I'm sorry to have hyped it and hyped the living shit out of it, but hats off to Timeless on this one. Change your stupid design though. I'm out. See you on the next video. Peace.